My son deserves someone better than you. Get a divorce right away. I won't have nothing to do with you anymore. Okay, I got it. After that, I sent all of my husband's belongings to my mother in law's house. What's happening? How did I get into this mess? I addressed my flustered mother in law in icy tone. Well, I guess you got what you deserved. My name is Nora. I'm a 30 year old administrative assistant. I'm in a relationship with Lucas, whom I met at a party. He's three years older than me and is alluring. I was immediately head over heels for him, who was affable and seemed to be serious about his job. We never ceased to carry on our conversations and exchanged our numbers at the end of the night. From then, he started asking me out, and after a few casual dates, we became official. After a year and a half of being together, we were very much in love, and I hoped to marry him someday. Then, on my birthday, he popped the question. I just thought he had made a reservation at a fancy restaurant to celebrate, but it turned out to be a surprise proposal. He gave me a birthday gift, so I was totally oblivious to his true intention and was thrilled when it happened. Of course, my answer was yes, and we were engaged. I was overjoyed that my soulmate proposed to me as a surprise on my birthday. At the time, I had no idea that this marriage would cause me so much trouble. We introduced each other to our families and got married without incident. He moved into my apartment, which belonged to my mom, to start our new life. My grandpa owned a business, and my mom had been studying investment with him since she was young. She continued her dealing after I was born. And she now has considerable assets in real estate and so on. The apartment I was living in was one of the real estate she purchased for investment. Since there was no rent to pay, we considered it a perfect opportunity to save money while studying our new l i v e t life. And that's why Lucas moved in. It was a three bedroom apartment, so there was plenty of space for the two of us. He asked me to be a full time housewife when we got married. I didn't have any particular attachment to my job, and I had a longing to be a full time homemaker. I quickly agreed and quit my job. Since then, I worked hard to make a comfortable home as a supportive wife. I cleaned, did laundry, and cooked as best as I could. And my hobby of baking got better and better. As a result, my time at home became more and more fulfilling. Lucas, who had a sweet tooth, was in ecstasy while eating cakes and other treats I made. These are really delicious. Thanks, Han. It goes well with coffee. We were leading a very joyful and loving newly wed life. But then, A disruptive presence appeared to disturb us. It was my mother in law, Grace. One day, she suddenly showed up at our apartment. Oh, Grace, what's going on? What? I'm not allowed to come to my son's house without a reason? No, no, that's not how I meant. It's just that if you plan to come, it'd be great if you could give us a heads up beforehand. So we can get things organized. If I had known she was coming, I'd have kept the cake I baked and served it with coffee. While I was thinking about that, she wandered around the apartment on her own, peering into rooms without asking. Um, what are you doing, Grace? I'm curious to see what the rooms are like. Or what? Is there something you don't want me to see? It's not like that, but. Once she finished, she sat down on the sofa in the living room. Nora, you're so thoughtless. Can't you offer a drink or something? But you're busy looking around the apartment on your own. 
Are you blaming me for your own lack of consideration? I can't prepare anything with you snooping around, you know. You talking back to me? Ah, you're so arrogant for a daughter in law. Her eyes widened and she got upset with me. It was obviously her fault for showing up without notice, so I couldn't understand why she was mad at me. She stayed for a while and made me prepare lunch. She even demanded dessert after that. I only have the same sweets when you came over last time. Jesus, you're so inconsiderate. Who showed up without any prior notice? I feel sorry for Lucas for having such an incompetent wife. You should be more responsible. It seems she was eager to bully me. She casually uttered unreasonable things to trouble me and then got angry with me. I guess she wanted to relieve her stress by blaming me in that way. In fact, after she scolded me, she wore a smug expression as if she had won. She needed to revel in a sense of superiority over me. Her personality was truly disgusting. She was quiet when we first met, but once we got married, she started to show her true color. On that day, I was constantly subjected to sarcastic remarks from her, and it really wore me out. I spoke to Lucas about her when he got home from work. Honey, your mom came out of the blue today, and it was really troublesome. She complained about everything in the house, and she gave me a lecture about my homemaking skills. Yeah, I heard from her. Oh, really? She left before he came back, so I thought she was keeping it a secret from him. She said she did an unannounced survey to see if you were doing the chores properly. Seriously? She was a little disappointed. She said you weren't as good of a homemaker as she expected. Ah, But she came right after you left for work. I think it's impossible to have finished cleaning or anything at that time of the day. She said you tend to talk back like that. She was right. You should try to listen to people's opinions more carefully and make an effort to improve. Are you kidding me? He unbelievably took her words to his heart and made a statement starting with her. Hold on, you know that I do my chores properly, don't you? Isn't that just superficial? I don't know how you're spending your time during the day. So I have to trust what my mom says. From now on, she'll be coming every week to teach you. So listen to her, okay? You've got to be kidding me. Why do you decide such things on your own? That's because you aren't doing your job right. Mom says she's not going to give up on you. And instead, she's going to help you. You should be grateful. I was at a loss for words. Grace's bullying was one thing, but Lucas's attitude was also unbelievable. Why was he controlled by her? I protested desperately, but he wouldn't listen. Then Grace really began to come to our place every week. Lucas gave her the code and a spare key without telling me, and she just opened the gate and the front door as she pleased. Well, let's start with the cleaning first. But before that, bring me coffee and some pastries. She had me prepare drinks and snacks for her relaxation while she lays around on the sofa, making me do the chores. Then, at her convenience, she came over and yelled, It's still dirty. You really suck at cleaning. And when she made me prepare lunch for her, she criticized the food. What do you think you're doing by serving such a pathetic meal? She bullied me every week and then left, looking satisfied with herself. 
She always reported to Lucas that I wasn't improving, and he believed her and blamed me for it. Even if I wanted to keep her out of the apartment, she had a spare key. I once tried to prevent her from entering by locking a bolt. She made a big deal about it and immediately called Lucas. Since then, she showed up during the morning hours when she was still at home to let her in. You know, Nora can't keep up with my instruction and did a terrible thing. I need to knock some sense into that lazy and rotten spirit of hers. I'm counting on you, Mum. I never thought she'd be such a hopeless daughter in law. What on earth did they think I was? I had no idea that Lucas was such a mummy's boy. I was mentally and physically exhausted from being bullied by Grace repeatedly. Then one day, Lucas announced the unthinkable. I'm going on a business trip today, so I asked Mum to stay here for three days. Excuse me? I couldn't believe my ears. No way, you can't be serious. Well, I am. He replied with a shrug of his shoulders. Then Grace arrived with a large travel bag. Good morning, Mum. Take good care of Nora from today, will you? Of course I will. As her mother-in-law, I'll make sure you're well trained. She grinned at me. Lucas took his carry-on and went on a business trip. I was in despair. I couldn't believe that I was alone with her for the next three days. I knew she was going to use me like a slave. But then something changed inside my brain. I realized that Lucas would continue to take his mama's side. If that was the case, I had no obligation to obey both of them. Nora, get breakfast ready quickly. I didn't have time to eat. Hmm, make me pancakes with fruits and vanilla ice cream. I'm in the mood for cafe au lait. Sweeten it up and get it ready. With that, she sat on the sofa and turned on the TV. She smirked at me as I prepared the ingredients. She thought that she was going to use me like a housekeeper from then on, and that she was going to enjoy a leisurely time. I wasn't going to allow that. I prepared what she wanted, put it on the table, and started to eat it myself. She got up from the sofa and the moment she looked at me, her eyes widened in surprise. Hey, what do you think you're doing? What do you mean, I'm eating my breakfast? Yes, that's mine, isn't it? What are you talking about? Since I used the ingredients in this house to make it, this is my breakfast. Thank you for the idea though, it's delicious. Don't you dare mock me. You think you're allowed to do this? I'll tell Lucas, so be prepared. Yeah, go ahead. If you want to interfere with him while he's busy working, be my guest. She was reaching for her phone, but my comment seems to dissuade her. She was aware that calling him on a business trip and bad mother me would have been a nuisance. You finish eating that and make mine. Why should I do that? I'm a guest. You came here on your own. I didn't invite you. How arrogant can you get? I'm so mad. Divorce my son. He deserves better than you. So get a divorce. I want to have nothing to do with you. Divorce? I see. Have you finally understood your position? If you get divorced, you won't be able to live in this beautiful apartment, you know. You have a good life now thanks to Lucas, and yet you're incredibly audacious. You should reflect on your past arrogance while living in a random apartment or something. She had a triumphant expression on her face. Okay, I got it. I'll divorce him. Really? 
She was surprised that I obeyed so easily, but she quickly returned to her smug smile. You just agreed, right? You can't take it back later, you know. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not going to change my mind. In fact, you're not going to take it back either, are you? Of course not. Oh, I'm delighted. Now Lucas can find a decent woman. She rejoiced, and I thought that line belonged to me instead. I've got some packing to do, so could you please go home now? I'm not going to follow any more of your orders about housework or anything. When I told her that, she shrugged her shoulders. Well, I guess so. If you leave, I'll have the freedom to come and go in this apartment as I please. Then she left excitedly. I started packing up things in haste. Of course, they weren't my things, but Lucas' belongings. And then I sent all of them to his family home. I also changed the locks. Neither he nor Grace could have entered the house anymore. A couple of days later, I got a call from Lucas. Oh, hey, why won't the door open? Are you at home? I'm at my parents' house. What are you doing there? I mean, why isn't my key working? Oh, I changed the locks. What do you mean? We are getting a divorce. Divorce? I've sent all your stuff to your parents' house. No way. Jeez, how did you come up with divorce? You'll have to ask Grace about that. I gotta go. Oh, wait. After I hung up on him, he apparently went to see Grace right away. Sometime later, I received a call from him again. Honey, did you seriously move all my stuff out? I told you so, didn't I? I'm divorcing you. Hold on, I never agreed. Mom took the initiative and pushed things right. Well then, it's invalid. I didn't think I could stay married to you. Your mom is entirely at fault, but you're also in the wrong for siding with her. He finally understood his position. It's my fault. From now on, I won't take her side. I'll make her apologize to you too. Mom, apologize to Nora. He then gave the phone to Grace. What's going on? How is this happening to me? Doesn't that apartment belong to Lucas? How are you staying there? <sighs> I used to saying things like that at this point. The apartment belongs to my mother. Lucas has no right to anything. He just moved in after we got married. That can't be true. But it is. Oh. And I have recordings and diary entries of all the verbal abuse and mistreatment from you. What? I've sent copies of those as well, just as I finished my sentence. Does she mean this? I had my father-in-law's voice in the back. Apparently, he was around. He played the recorded audio I made. From the stereo, I could hear Grace's voice yelling. The volume was loud enough for me to hear it even over the phone. Wait, when did you make this? Jesus, what's this all about? Have you been skipping out on housework and bullying Nora at her house the whole time? I heard my father-in-law yelling at Grace. Oh, well, you see. Nora, Please explain to him, I was just teaching you housework. I addressed the flustered Grace in an icy tone. You've been coming to my place to bully me. I knew it. I can't put up with you anymore. Let's get a divorce. With that, I heard him walk away. Nora, because of you, I might lose everything. What are you going to do about it? Well. I guess you deserved it. I'm the victim here. 
I could even consider suing for emotional distress I've endured. Oh no, I didn't mean to. Anyway, divorce is inevitable, so please convey this to Lucas, who's probably frozen in place there. If he doesn't comply, I'll take legal action. I hung up the phone. After that, Lucas called me several times, but I ignored him and demanded a divorce through my lawyer. He resisted for a while, but eventually gave in and agreed to it. Later, my father in law filed for a divorce from Grace, and she was kicked out from the house. Lucas is now living in a rented apartment where Grace forced herself to move in with him. He is constantly angry and blames her. It's all your fault. And Grace fights back. It's your fault for not explaining things properly. They fight every day. I've received an email from him saying he wants to reconcile and promises to treat me better this time. After reporting his current situation with his mother, I've been ignoring all of them. If he continues to pester me in the future, I'm thinking of consulting the police. Well, he's a coward, so if I mention the word police, he'll freak out and run away. Now, I'm living alone in a spacious apartment. I most likely obtain half of the money Lucas earned during our marriage through the property division, so I plan to take my time and look for a job at my own pace.